Right, apologies guys, we're going in now. Right. Right, right, right. Let's get it on then. Last match of the day. Prepared for battles. Prepare to fight! <laughs> on guard with the attack. Play Malias with the first defense. Let's see what they do. Right, so Pond Gather attacking, obviously Blame Elias defending. Blame Elias have a number of cavs straight off the bat. They've got Winged Assars and the Chevaliers. They've also got the Skulls. They have two sets of Shenjis and Flames out. The attackers have got four sets of Iron Reapers, two Berserkers, Mudau. It looks like they might go for a wall climb. One Sakalian and one Shenji. Obviously, they will have Rebs as well. get into the air as quickly as we can because we know this map goes real quick so they've got three guys on the b side just probably to get down the gate 12 guys then on a criticals already coming over here then so it's only going to be two um sledge main and dealer for life need to be careful that they don't get jumped on but it's only blood story there anyway oh apologies for the hiccups right uh the defenders have changed to two shenjis they've got flames out as they're popping so Elias has got his flamers. Fallen Ronin and Soul have got Shin. The Berserkers down here as well to ruin them if they would climb up onto the wall. There's going to be some sort of flames in here. Shenjis at least. Where are the flames? I read the flames. It'll flame me. Right, so the A side gate is down. Looks like Sledge Main. Oh no, they've opened up the gate and they're sallying out with the Chevaliers. They're against uh, Grey Hair though. Looks like they've actually gone through and done all right. The second unit of Cavs come through and they've got rid of that. So there's like three of them sallying out. Uh, that Treb's going to do a bit of work on the cavalry though. So the attackers are moving in on Breach. Blame has been very aggressive with the defense over there though. 27 oh, unit wise, it's very even so far. On guard just dropped a hero on the B side. Blood Story and Matt are going after Dealer for Life now. I temple hours your game. That's like... right. Here we go. So good trip coming in there. That actually landed pretty goddamn sweetly. Killed a couple of Shenjis on some of the berserkers as well. Good Sakalian throws coming in. Good split push as well. They need to be careful of this push here though. They've got nothing moving to block them. Big mistake. Them javelins are obviously going to do work. They're going to get the oh good trip though on the Fort Brachio. Iron Reapers moving in. Second unit of Reapers probably should have moved in as well. I don't understand why they're going up there. Shenji's in the back area are going to be a problem too. Nice, has just jumped on him though. Mistrack and Soul are going to try and stop him though. Uh, the fight over here. Them shields are doing work. Keep Oh, they've got shields over here though as well. Matt's jumped in behind them. That Treb could be pretty good. They need to get on these Shenjins. Oh no, the Shenjins are running away. They've killed the hero then. The defenders have just dropped loads of guys though. Pongard doing work so far, man. Like, hero-wise, they just dropped a lot. Obviously, that cavalry charge was pretty good. I think it was monastics. Is that monastics or was that the rest of the chevaliers? That's chevaliers. These Shenjis need to die here. They can't let Dealer for Life's Shenjis keep firing. I think that's Dealer for Life. That is Dealer for Life. Interesting that uh, Blame Elias aren't jumping all over these Shenjins. Bravo's going in now, though, so Bravo's seen it. He's not going to be able to get much done, though, with that many heroes and support coming, though. I think he managed to get one or two dead. Yeah, okay. But, um... On guard are stabilising. They're doing work. 
Good cavalry charge there coming in. Wing to Sars. Getting into a good chunk of the reinforcements coming down from Blame Elias, man. Very nice charge. These shields should really be getting moved here. Come yeah, no, don't. Cavalry coming from behind, though. Mr. Tok with the armored Armigers. Mr. Tok always gets a nice flank off, though. Deja vu, Mr. Tok jumping on the Shenjis in the back here with Aranor. Good treb coming in from Pondguard. Pondguard so far, though, definitely winning the unit exchange. I'm pretty sure they're winning the hero exchange as well. I haven't been able to check yet, but because the fight's going on so quick, I'm not going to be able to. A lot of defenders coming in. Another good wing to Sar charge, though, coming down straight towards that bridge. Getting all the way through, clearing a lot of the units. These um, javelin sergeants need to die. 10 against 9 hero-wise, so very, very close. I would say there are slightly more blue units on the actual point than red, although that is now not the case because a lot of units are retreating. There are berserkers in there just murdering the retreating units as well. Reinforcements in the form of palace guards and grey hair for the attackers, but there are a lot more defenders on point than there are than there are attackers. So on guard should probably pull back, reset. They still do have the unit advantage. They still do, should have the hero advantage. Let's have a double check. Oh no, it's very close. 18, 19. I should have. Very, very close. And here comes the support for Pondguard getting in. Let's go, two nice. That's. <laughs> Let's go, Pondguard. Pondguard looked pretty good there, though, man. I think they maybe should have pulled back a little bit earlier and reset. Managed to get sexy. Few. That was just the mole just picked him up and dragged him outside, and then they all just gang raped him a little bit, but you know. That's the, 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 the problems you have to deal with when there's so many moles running around on the field. Um, they've got three minutes, though. The defenders have two sets of Shenjis out. They've got a Zekalian. The attackers have got... Why have they got two sets of... They lose all of this. Must have done. They're on two sets of Alchemists. They've got Zekalian. They're going to do good as well. And uh, Flamer Boys. But having two sets of Alchemists is not going to help them that much, I don't think. I don't think the smoke, even if they throw it into it reduces um, accuracy. It's not going to do that much to Shenji bomb. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't do up to alien bombs either. So I don't know how, how well that's going to work. We'll, we'll see though, I suppose. That could be a very good treb coming in there now though. Alice Guard's moving straight into the front of the Fort of Brachios. They're completely without support, though, so they've just been absolutely ruined before they could get anything done. So, the Alchemist smoke's coming in, but it's not really seeming to do much. Deja Vu as Pikes has jumped in at the back to get rid of some of their units. He's got Berserkers back there as well doing work. So, he's just got rid of... I think that was Shenju's back there. That Treb's just been blocked by the Watchtower, so very unlucky there. Is that Veggie's... Yeah, Elias' uh, shield's pushing in to stop the cap. 1 minute 50, I think. Elias. I'm going to bit hold on for this. Nobody's touched B yet from the attackers, which is interesting. Both teams are down two heroes. Three now for the, the attackers. Deja Vu coming back in from behind. He must have just run off and healed. Um, I mean, there's still a good chunk of blue units here, but I don't think they have the units to beat Flame Elias. That um, Zidris with his belly flop though just absolutely exploded that Fort Brachio unit. Yeah, most of the attackers have just been wiped, so they're gonna ah, they're gonna have time to reset. That's GG, blame Elias, I think. GG, blame Elias, I think. For the first round, at least. Group casual. Rough man, this map's rough. Like if you if you can't get past A and B, obviously if you can't get past A and B, you lose. But normally as the attacker, if you get past A and B, you've basically won as well. Um because the rest of the map's just so easy to hit as an attacker. And hero disparity should be a lot higher now than it was just. You're 34 to 24, so 10, 10 heroes more kills. Sexy Q and Lord Monker running around behind there to just get rid of some of the units that have just spawned in. The defenders, so Blame Elise have still got like massive amounts of presence. Trenji bombs coming in. Flames from the attackers though, from Lone Swordman, but I think they just took the Shenji bombs straight to the face. You got Sexy Q, Don Moralsman or something, jumping into the back of the shields to get rid of it, and then the rest, everything else is spawned in, man. GG. That was a tough matchup.
Very, very nicely played from Flame Elias. Gilcho with the MVP though for Pongard. There was uh, Maximus Meridius saying good shit Gilcho. Definitely did his work. Definitely did some work there, man. 4-1-5 as well on the heroes. Takedown, second player, 1-3-4 on 89. 12 Shenjus as well for takedown. Six flames for uh, our Howery Hill? We'll just say our Hill. <laughs> Sekai as well with a few Zakalians and Shenjis killed. And if people wonder why I always just go for specialists to look through, I just feel... I just feel like normally like killing specialists is like them. They're the most high value units on the field. So Blood Story for Blame Elias with the MVP. He's got four heroes killed, one death, 15 assists, and 119 units. Very well played. Five of the units as well were Stiferophonoise and Flamey Boys. So well done, that man. Deja Vu. Again, three Shenjis, three Flame. Moist. Hence the Kalian Fury. Very nicely played, man. Let's look at the both attack. The first fight was actually pretty goddamn even, to be fair. And then... Ongar just got hammered on that second. Look at the second hit it's good like. 